Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me, and thanks for joining. I caught a cold last month, and I still have some cough relief remaining with me, so forgive me in advance if you, if you had a problem, trouble to hear me. <laughs> I try not to cough, but forgive me. Okay, so today I will talk about how can your OSPO maximize open source business value for the organization. This talk is based on my experience at Op OSPO or Community Strategy. We received a request from our business unit. In addition to our open source engineering guidelines, which is already published on the corporate portal, they specifically asked us to provide uh, not only an engineering perspective, but also business perspective, perspective consultation around open source product. For example, what do they need to pay attention and how to avoid the pitfalls so that they can build more commercially competitive products, minimizing risks around open source. So in this talk, I'm going to share some of the guidelines provided, which I hope also find useful for your organization. So let me take you through the agenda. Firstly, I will talk about why an organization needs an open source development strategy, and what is the impact to their business without it. Then I will introduce typical open source business models and open source commercialization path. Next, I will share an example of organization's strategic development approach with open source. What we need to consider to minimize the risks. <clears throat> Then I will talk about why we need to review competitive technologies on a regular basis for our business. Finally, wrap up the talk, then we have uh, some time for the questions. So a bit about my background. So I'm a staff program manager, most recently a strategic open source business alignment lead in OSPO. At the beginning of my career, Originally, I started as a Windows develop, uh, software developer at a global technology company in Japan. Then I worked in the US and the UK. As a engineering manager, I led the teams to develop the Windows device, mobile phone, and the Linux and Android-based products and applications. After that, I changed my career from telecoms to cloud as a program manager where I led multiple programs, including company m and business transformations, data center deployment, information security compliance, and many other corporate programs. At VMware, as a strategic open source community lead, I led many open source related programs in order to align the company's open source strategy and the business goals. Okay, let's get started. Why do we align open source and business strategy? So many companies that use open source understand its business value, speed, efficiency, flexibility, and many other advantages. But it is important to remember that the full potential of open source is best realized when technology is paired with the community engagement, along with the effective business strategy. So as a first step, it is critical for enterprise leaders to build a strong strategy with open source for their products, identifying what and where they want to invest for their revenue growth. And in order to take advantage of these benefits, <coughs> it's critical for the organization to make a strong, consistent commitment for com uh, com uh, community participation, in, in addition to the technology and the business growth. In general, when we develop a new product or start a new project, in order to secure buying within the organization, we will need a business case 
including a ROI, return on investment plan. This also applies for open source software. Sufficient research and understanding of the risk is critical. We need to remember that open source itself is not a strategy. Open source has a different, very different philosophy and a process to create software. We need to be precise. The strategy is made up from why, what, and how we open source. That will create a clear vision to realize our business goals. So what will happen if we start without a strategy? We may create products that may not produce revenue or lose revenue sometimes. We may degrade the value of our proprietary software or surprise the customer community by an incorrect approach or license changes. And there is a risk to damage to our business and the company reputation. Open source can have a significant impact on a business, both positively and negatively. Therefore, it's very important to build a clear strategy on it. In the organization, there are many people who want to use open source. But not everyone is familiar with how to choose the right project or how to use open source in a way that fits to their business purposes. As a center of gravity for organizations' open source operations, OSPO can provide a comprehensive guideline to help business units to build an effective strategy to maximize their opportunity while minimizing the risks to the business. For this purpose, as OS our OSPO provided an additional best practice guide to the organization, questionnaire with consultations to ensure our open source development strategies are aligned with our corporate business goals. And this, and this will also help to bring consistency to the ecosystem, how we approach open source. Okay, next section, open source business models. So these are the most common open source business models. Note that they're not mutually exclusive. They are usually combined and customized to fit each business. Let's now look at each model in turn as a starting point. The services and support model, where we may pay for, uh, sorry, where we pay for professional support. <coughs> this is the most traditional model. A good example would be Red Hat Enterprise Linux. It offers test the software for free and, char and charges for professional technical support services, such as bug fix, regular releases, new features, and optimization. It might be suitable for enterprise customers that look for one-stop service with timely support. New feature development may be prioritized based on customer demand. Although this is a popular model with startups and most uh, more established companies, very few companies have successfully adopted this model, as it's hard to scale and can be expensive with the cost of additional staff and total cost can exceed the service revenue. The open core model where we pay for proprietary and or enhanced functionality. This is perhaps one of the most widely adopted models. Examples are MongoDB, Elastic, GitLab, and more. In this model, users can access core versions of technology 
as open source and a more featured and supported version as a proprietary offering. Typically, this model provides a community of a community or freemium version and sells an enterprise or premium version. In this model, it is important to curate the differences between the open source and the proprietary part to avoid impact to the project. If the open source project is weak, the enterprise proprietary offering will likely suffer. As a primary contributor, the sponsoring company can have direct control and influence the project roadmap and the licensing model. But sometimes, an active community will create open source alternatives to the proprietary features. <laughs> the hosting SaaS model, where we pay for tooling and operations. This is the most recent model which followed the rise of cloud computing. <coughs> Examples are Azure, Databricks, WordPress, and many other. Exam um, it offers bundling of loss, uh, sorry, it offers bundling of open source services and products <coughs> as a managed cloud service. Large public cloud providers offer this model and customers use the cloud provider service. For this reason, sometimes open source companies change their product licensing to prohibit selling their software as a service without paying royalties to protect their commercial interests. The cloud providers can offer fully integrated services by guiding users towards their commercial offerings. And if there is a lack of community consensus, it may lose the trust of the community. The marketplace as a partnership. Google Android generates revenue by platforming the Google Play Store, Google Maps, and directing mobile web traffic through search engines. Mozilla Firefox earns its revenue from partnership with companies as built-in search options in the browser. There are many other models. However, most business models are combination of each. To conclude, the best business model depends on the type of product, solution, market, and company strategy. The key is to customize and adopt a model that suits for you best, that satisfies both market and your business, ensuring ROI. It requires a lot of thought around how to balance the commercial and open offerings. For example, if the open offering goes too far, there's no natural extension to the commercial offerings. And if the open offering is not sufficient, the community will not be interested. When done well, products create unique value, benefiting, benefiting from the opportunity to monetize while being welcome and accepted by the community and the ec ecosystem. Next section, open source commercializ commercialization, go-to-market strategy. The commercialization journey of product with open source is very different to those based on the proprietary software. Users, who are the potential future customers, want to make their own selections and avoid long procurement process. We take a developer community driven approach to educate how the project works rather than marketing a product. PLG, product-led growth, is a growth strategy that where the product drives user acquisition and engagement. <coughs> In the context of open source, 
It allows users to try before they buy and engage as potential future customers who like the product and stay loyal. They form a developer community that also act as a support sales term, a support sales team to disseminate your product. This diagram, referred from Community to Commercialization by Peter Levin, shows an example of open source commercialization path. Here, I use a value ladder as opposed to sales funnel to better reflect incremental value. This is broken down into four stages. Stage one, awareness. Developer community engagement. In this first stage, the focus is to generate awareness of the open source project product in the developer's community in order to grow the user base. Promote the technical value by driving engagement and grow interest, like with forums or blogs. Stage two, consideration, product strategy refinement. In this stage, we start to analyze usage patterns and user feedbacks, explore what and how it naturally extends to drive revenue, and further refine product strategy to mature product users into product consumers. Stage three, evaluation, sales deployment, development. Start outbound marketing with specific segments who find value in the project. Learn more about users. Are they larger enterprise or just hobby users? Understand further commercial use case. Focus on the needs of users and what they want to do with the project and product. Final stage four, purchase sales, expansion, and further adoptions. Sales promotions to enterprise, both bottom-up user adoption to expand the usage and top-down sales to land deals. <laughs> the go-to-market journey also depends on product, solution, market, and company. To conclude, we need to grow together with the community by letting developers who are the primary decision makers for commercial open source software try how a technology works in their own environment. We can build and grow a community which values and grows their wider interest. We must work all aligned across the business functions from developers to product managers, marketing sales to leadership teams and all must stay focused on our potential customers' needs. This is why we build a solid product strategy at the beginning and share within the organization and continue to review it so that they share a same framing in their mind. Also, it's important to continue refining the productization approach to mature open source project users into product consumers. We must always focus on their needs, our values, and the capabilities, where our potential customers will be happy to pay for. <coughs> so far, we looked at the uh, business models and the go-to-market strategy. Now, next section, we will look at the strategic development approach of the organization. The purpose of developing open source tends to fall into one of three patterns. Create a new project to realize a unique technology, new features, or create a new platform. And in enhance existing project to utilize existing features and enhance them. 
or sometimes we just want to use them to get the job done without developing. And organizations that take strategic development approach around open source tend to work on either creating their original self-owned project from scratch or contributing to the existing third-party project that belongs to other organizations or foundations. From the next slide, let's look at what we need to pay attention for each. When we create our original project and build a community around it, we can benefit from the power of community, many skilled people, diverse viewpoints that increase resilience within the project, within the business. <clears throat> As a good open source citizen, we need to make the communities a better place instead of duplicating our efforts. Therefore, before starting a new project, we must ensure that our project is unique and differentiate from existing projects so that the project will likely to be successful and benefit both our business and the entire open source ecosystem. If your company creates its own project, your organization will become a maintainer and you'd like to build and maintain a community that is healthy and open around the project. Here, make sure your organization is willing to make a long-term commitment to maintain the projects. If they cannot, the organization should not start to create a new project. If the goal is to collaborate with internal teams, inner source would be a better option. Transparency is also very important to build a successful project community. Share the project roadmap and feature plan so that people can check if it is aligned with their business goals. If the community loses interest, interest or misunderstands, <coughs> it is likely the project may fail. We must make an intentional choice which source code to open, rather than just sharing all by default. We need to establish a clear business plan behind it with the vision of which issues we'd like to resolve, for whom, and what type of community ecosystem we'd like to build around, and how we can take advantage of it to generate revenue from products. The timing of when to open is also important. If we open our code too early, a project can have too little appeal to the community. And if we open too late, the community may feel there's less opportunity to contribute to it. The best timing will depend on our goals and the type of community we are looking to build. The project license can indicate the intention to users. For example, using a CLA for vendor-driven product creates the impression that are leaving the door open to dual licensing or changing the license. Whereas using a DCO often feels more open and the lower barrier to entry, entry for contributors than a CLA. You will need to engage with your legal team and make a business decision about what type of license is the best for you. They consider how your licensing will impact your efforts to build a community around your project. Now let's look at third-party open source project. By using third-party open source project and adapt it into the solution, we can access immediately available technologies or benefit from established community power. If a project plays a key part in a product, 
we are likely to modify and upstream the code for better productivity. There are many projects available, and it's important to choose that right one. If we don't choose the right one, it may cost more and or waste our effort, so not good. To minimize the risks, we need to consider a few aspects. <coughs> Make sure the project meets the functional requirements and check that it's compatible with your environment, such as operating system, hardware, architecture, and programming languages. Understand the project licensing compliance. GPL and derived licenses will mostly enforce you to contribute customization to the original project before you can monetize, while other licenses are more flexible. Project health is very important for the business viability. Projects with significant adoption tend to be more successful and safe. Explore and research trends, folks, dependent projects, and which other companies are using them. Make sure the project is active and mature. Ensure it has a good set of documentation and shares roadmap and feature plan pub publicly. Evaluate the community health. The project with good culture and with, communication, with open communication will be more sustainable. Project governance and leadership is equally important. Look for neutral governance, where decisions are more uh, openly by, uh, made by people from different organizations. Watch out if the project is owned or controlled by companies, competitors. Make sure the security policy is documented with a solid process allowing uh, anyone to report quickly. <coughs> Our customers do rely on us to ship products that are safe and secure, and this applies to all components within these pro products. <coughs> Company engagement. If the project is used in a core part of our solutions or in our flagship products, we must ensure our business units are ready to commit sufficient budget and resources to contribute to the project. To avoid unexpected surprises that could impact our customers, we must engage with the project community so that we have good visibility and influence on the future direction. In addition, our contributions towards the project need to be consistent and aligned within the organization in order to avoid community frustration and that to protect our company reputation. Last section, competitive technology. Being aware of potentially competitive project is critical and both start and during the lifetime of our products. When we start a new product development, we should research existing open source projects that may directly compete. If any are found, both the technical quality and the community's potential should be reviewed. So we need to review competitive open source project on a regular basis. If any competitive project is gaining momentum in usage, contribution, or vendor adoption, a product's position is at risk in the market. In this situation, you may need to re-review the strategy of your product and project. The final thoughts. Open source can become a powerful tool, but also introduce risk. 
if we don't pay attention to the basics. There's no magic wand that guarantees revenue increase from open source. It's not automatic. But we can guide the teams on what to consider to create a strong strategy that leads to business success. And OSPO can help you to do this, guiding your organization as a center of open source operations. We must remember that engaging well with the community is key and critical to make open source successful, not only for your business, but also for growth of the entire open source ecosystem. Okay, uh, that's all for my talk, and I'd like to invite any questions. Thank you. Yes, please. Yes, so ah, you sorry. Thank you. So you mentioned long-term support of the projects mm -hmm. that it's released. Uh, when you say long-term support, how long-term should one be working with? And how do one deal with securing the support for those projects sort of in a changing business environment, perhaps mm -hmm. in, in a downsizing or restructuring of a company? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the question is, uh, in terms of long-term support, how long and also how to decide um, the, sorry, the second question was, sorry, can you repeat, please? So how to best protect that long-term support if, if there is restructuring or downsizing in the company? All right, okay. Thank you. So, yeah. So the first question, how long? So it depends on, so you're talking about your own company-owned project, right? Or the third party? Which, which one? Uh, your company-owned product. Your own product, Pre okay. Product. So if it's your uh, uh, company-owned project, then you know, you're the automatically maintainer, so you've got to grow them. Uh, without you, uh, it's just a leftover. So it's, um, you know, you'll become naturally maintainer. So how long is the question? So once you start open source, and once someone in this world is interested, you can't easily um, close and finish the project. So you've got to have a good um, strategy and company's commitment and buy-in that it's worth investing this project and make sure that this will, you know, because this is not just a volunteer just opening, hey, this is a code you can use. So you um, have a clear strategy how to make a profit from it and also how you can benefit from the manpower from the community. Then how long it is, again, depends on the size of the product and also the size of the project, your team size. But for example, in my previous company, uh, just thinking, if that uh, open source is the core part of the product, then uh, we had a good, good at least three years of planning and um, secure the pro uh, resources to maintain at least so that is ideal situation. However, the reality is that we ended up having sometimes four or five people, and then sometimes one or two people. It depends on you know we uh, the resources for it, and if some, something is prioritized, then we have to move the resources uh, temporarily. But um, you got to have at least two or three good maintainers, strong technical maintainers who can lead the entire project. Um, so that's that's core cool. and. How to scale down, uh, it depends again, if the project product is really well sold product and then many enterprises are relying on that, it's easy to um, budget them and then secure the team numbers. But if the revenue is not great from that product, then it naturally <laughs> come to the, the discussion with your boss and managers and the leadership team that we uh, but it's always important in my slides that we have to be all aligned across the functions, including the marketing, sales, and also business and engineering all together in the same frame uh, mindset saying, you know, we, we always discuss it and then refine the strategy, how many resources we, we um, allocate for this project and to grow so that we'll make this profit. So it's always, you know, regular basis, we always review it. 
So if it goes scaling down, then we need to scale down the team. And if it's going growing, then we have to scale up. So regular base uh, review is the key for here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes, please. Thank you for the presentation. <coughs> I'm curious about the uh, uh, about the project community health uh, and uh, project community health. Yes. How evaluate? How evaluate, uh, do you evaluate the uh, uh, project community health? Mm. Uh, uh, I'm curious about the how degree uh, mm -hmm. uh, criteria. Yeah, criteria mm. and uh, how quant quantitatively yes. evaluated. Yeah, uh, understand. Do you have any Yeah, idea? yeah, okay, thank you. So your question is uh, regarding the community health, yes. how to evaluate how healthy your open source project yes. is uh, and what's the criteria, how to sort of numerically uh, yes, quantitatively. Yeah, compare. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I also ran the program relate on that and then it's called, it's, it wasn't quite called project health assessment, but, mm. oh yes, it was called project assessment uh, program I ran, both in an um, internal uh, company-owned project and also the third-party project. Me, myself, personally, um, running a third-party project health, and do you want to know both, the company-owned and also third-party project health? Uh, not in general, just no. in general, yeah. So. For my program, I have a table. I define the criteria uh, of project uh, maturity and openness and also the uh, governance. You know, there are two or three uh, indications, the categories, and I have color coded. If uh, this project is maintained by uh, one organization or more than three organizations or including across the, including the neutral foundations, then I set green, amber, and red, mm -hmm. um, and the numbering, and then scoring the each project. I run this uh, every six months, how healthy the each project is, and also the project maturity, like they have enough document public, uh, published on the website, and also how many adopters, uh, is it just used one or two enterprises, or is it used mm -hmm. absolutely everyone across the world. So again, the color code is uh, with numbers. And then, and then uh, uh, the governance and, the con and the also uh, community openness, uh, how open, you know, how regularly they run the community meetings and uh, do they publish the meeting minutes? And also, do they publish their feature plans and the regular releases and are they all published and archived? Is it easily? For the new person who come to the project first time, they can find easily how to get started, where they can find the information. All this information, are they publicly published? Again, pub uh, color-coded green, amber, and red, and I scored all of uh, 16 or 17 categories. And then if it's internal project, I called in uh, uh, project maintainer teams, uh, engineering teams. I reviewed, I gave my assessment result and then gave the feedback and discussed with them, not just telling you, hey, your, your project is amber or red. I'm just saying, oh, your project has got problem in this area, so please improve. And I set the target. Uh, in the next six months, can you please improve this, this, this? And if it's third party project, then uh, uh, I will I will just talk to um, uh, in a different route. I'm trying to s uh, reach out to those project owners and the maintainers to give my uh, feedback. So that that's what I did. Sorry, it's time. So if uh, if we have more <laughs> questions or if you want to discuss after this, I will talk individually. Thank you so much. Um, that's all. Thank you.